Hi everyone, I'm Lorenz and in this video I'm going to talk about some extreme sports games on the GameCube. The best way to describe aggressive inline is to call it Tony Hawk but with skates instead of skateboards. Also for that time the game brought something nice to the formula. It didn't have a timer, which meant that you could skate at your heart's content without being stressed out by the clock. You can lose a level only if you run out of juice, but that will mean for you to stand and do nothing, which means that you'll run out of juice only if you do it on purpose. Also the game formula was different to the Tony Hawk games of that time, by the size of the maps. Tony Hawk games of that period had tiny maps in comparison to the gigantic maps in aggressive inline. I mean the maps in aggressive are gigantic even in base form, and you'll be amazed to see how many areas you can further unlock in those maps. After you'll find out, you'll be shocked how the already gigantic map is even bigger than you expected. Also the maps have easter eggs and have a good amount of detail, and there are 7 of these gigantic maps. In them you get missions on the map and side missions that activate by talking to characters on the map, and there are also collectibles to be found. I know, it sounds similar to the latter Tony Hawk games, like Underground for example, but this game was released before Tony Hawk changed its formula. As for the controls, they feel similar to Tony Hawk. There are some differences though, like for example in the vault and pole mechanics, but for the most part it feels very similar to the tried and true formula of Tony Hawk. Also the upgrade system is a little different. You don't unlock attribute points, but rather get experience points from doing tricks. And the more you do, the more you upgrade your stats. Jump, speed, spin, grind, manual, fakey and wall ride. And there are 12 skaters in the game. And when you change a character, the stat points don't transfer to the character you've selected. The, the other character will have its base stat points. So if you want to upgrade all characters in the game, you will have to finish the game with each character. The game also has a park builder option and there are also some quick fun modes, like who scores the most in 2 minutes, or combo competitions, or go on a timed egg hunt, or save a parrot, yeah, that's one mission. And you can also play the game both in single player and in local co-op. I consider it amazing, it's definitely a game worth picking up. Go Go Hyper Grind is a skating game with great presentation and very basic gameplay. In presentation you get cutscenes, funny jokes and some Looney Tunes quality gags. In gameplay it's like the usual skating game, but really dumped down. If you want to do a flip trick, you don't combine as many buttons, you just ollie and then press the flip trick button, and your character will do a flip trick. At least each of the game's 12 characters has special tricks with special animations. There are 8 maps in the game, as game modes you get free ride, as a single timed run, an endless run and a tutorial run. There's also versus battle mode and there are mini games you can play with a friend. And even a mode called push, where the player that gains more points starts pushing the other characters off the screen. And the story mode has you playing one of like 5 mini games. Here you go through about a total of 40 challenges. Competitions range from straight up point contests to a Simon Says type of game where you'll have to perform certain gag tricks into a specific order. You can breeze through the game easily, but at least each character has different endings, which adds more replay value, if you want to find out the ending of each character that is. Also by playing you get currency, with which you can unlock stuff in the shop. And here items aren't just for show, with items you boost your stats. Overall the game is great, the presentation is really good, I mean the animations, the little details in how each character interacts with the world and the graphics, but gameplay wise, but gameplay wise while the game offers, its controls might feel too basic for some players. So because of the basic controls, I recommend the game only to casual gamers and kids because anyone wanting depth in controls or a challenge will be disappointed. Still, I consider the game great. World Tour is an interesting mix between a skating game and a platformer. If you've played other skating games before, then the controls will feel familiar to you. The objectives will be familiar to you too, but what makes the game different is the boost bar and the health bar. Yep, if you bump into stuff, you lose life points. Also on the map are power-ups, like for example speed boosts, power-ups that let you spin faster, 
or jump higher and farther, and another addition of, to the gameplay formula are the bosses. Yep, bosses in a skating game. They aren't that exciting when you play, nor are difficult to beat, but still, bosses in a skating game are rare. The objectives in the first part of a level can get repetitive, I mean, get the high score, grind some rails or knock down some objects, but at least the second part of a level is unique and adds more flavor to the game, comes a downhill level in a completely new location. Here you must race and do tricks, as tricks fill up your boost meter. The level designs are disappointing. There are jumps that you can do only from one single ramp, and until you find out which ramp it is, you'll just gonna see yourself fail. Also grinds don't always stick. Stat points are given to you automatically, once you pass certain checkpoints in the story, you get new stat points, and if you want to unlock stuff, you can unlock scooters by collecting scooter points, each 20 points earns you a new scooter, different stats, and by progressing in the story, you unlock all 6 characters in the game. The plot of the game is that your team Flipside was captured by a scientist. <coughs> And now Wasabi wants to save his friends. Overall, the game is kinda mediocre. It started out with a good and original idea, but the execution doesn't hold up. Wave Race Blue Storm shows how beautiful water physics can get on the GameCube. In the game you have to race by passing bullets. Red ones are passed on the right and yellow ones on the left. There are 8 characters in the game, each with different stats. As for game modes, you get Championship, Time Trial, Stunt Mode, Multiplayer, Free Roam and Tutorial. Championship has 4 categories, Exhibition, Normal, Hard and Expert. The difficulties are split into days because they add some strategy to the gameplay. You can choose whichever day you want to tackle first. And after you finish the race, the weather forecasts from before are changed. So if you know you have a hard time with one course, you can avoid racing it on bad weather. You can also do tricks during races to get your boost faster, but for my skill set, it was difficult to do tricks, since racing alone was challenge enough. But if you want to see an expert, I suggest watching GameCube Galaxy's review for this game. I will leave a link in the description. He's an expert when it comes to this game. It's hard to pick up and master, it takes a lot of time to get so good that you can do tricks while racing in a stormy weather on expert difficulty. But yeah, overall the game is great. It's challenging, it has plenty of little details in the levels and in its graphics, it's fun to play, but beware casual gamers that this game isn't for you. You'll have plenty of frustrating moments, especially when you see that you can't restart the race. If you screw up, no matter where in a championship, you have to start all over. 